Hi everyone, it's Chris with Nightfall Audiobooks. This book is Killer's Kiss by R.L. Stein. It is a standalone Fear Street novel, and it's towards the end of the Fear Street line. I read through this very, very quickly to get an idea of the characters and the voices and things. It looks like this is about a guy that tries to date more than one girl at the same time, and this reminds me heavily of Double Date, also by R.L. Stein, where a guy tries to date twins at the same time. Double Date is one of my favorite books, and I will be reading that in the future. But I haven't read Killer's Kiss yet, so we're going to see how this goes. I don't have any idea what to expect, but if I had to take a good guess, the girls that this guy Vincent is dating figure out that he's dating both of them, and they plot some kind of cool twisted revenge. So we'll see. So sit down and relax, and enjoy Killer's Kiss. Welcome to a Nightfall Audiobooks production of Killer's Kiss by R.L. Stein, a Fear Street novel, Book 42. Chapter 1 Whoa! Vincent Milano dropped back against the sofa cushions. He could still feel the touch of Delia Easton's lips on his cheek. He watched her run a silver tube of purple lipstick over her lips. She stroked it across her full lower lip. She smoothed it over her top lip. She carefully outlined her lips. Something must have told her it looked perfect. She smacked her lips together and blotted them with a tissue. Then she tossed the tissue onto the table in front of the couch. A perfect set of lip prints stained the white tissue, dark purple lip prints. They grinned up at Vincent the same way Delia grinned at him from her spot on the couch. Vincent ran a hand through his wavy dark hair. He reached across Delia and grabbed the tissue from her bag. Then he wiped a smudge of purple lipstick off his cheek. Now, what were we talking about? he asked. He gave Delia one of his Vincent Milano trademark smiles. We need to plan your birthday party, Delia replied. She checked her watch. But I guess we'll have to do that some other time. It's late. I should go home. Vincent scooted closer. It's not that late. You don't have to go yet. He stroked one finger under her left ear. Delia giggled. Then she glanced at the front window. Your parents will probably be home soon, she said. But they're not home yet. Vincent turned to the window. He couldn't see much. Just Delia's little red Jetta parked in the driveway. The street in front of the house stood empty. You won't be home for a while. Actually, Vincent's parents wouldn't be back for hours. But he expected someone at nine. Someone he did not want Delia to see. He checked the clock on the mantel. Only 8.30. Plenty of time before Karina arrived. He might as well enjoy himself while he waited. Vincent kissed Delia again. She would never guess that his big smile had anything to do with Karina Fry. Mm. Delia stared up at him, her brown eyes sparkling. I went shopping for a new outfit today, she told him. I want something special to wear on your birthday. I tried on a purple vinyl skirt, but I'm not sure. Oh, great, Vincent thought. Karina and Delia will both expect to spend my birthday with me. Vincent laughed. You look awesome in purple vinyl, Delia blushed. It's the truth, Vincent told himself. And it's what she wants to hear. What's wrong with that? Delia wasn't beautiful, not like Karina. But people noticed her everywhere she went. You have great hair, Vincent whispered. He ran his hands through Delia's long, dark curls. And you know that purple lipstick drives me crazy, he added. Yes, he found exactly the right thing to say. Delia planted a kiss on Vincent's mouth. He tried not to think about Karina while he kissed Delia. He would never be able to choose between the two girls. They were too different. He couldn't compare them. Karina had super smooth blonde hair and light blue eyes. She was prettier than anyone Vincent had ever seen. She reminded him of a shell Pfeiffer. Delia was outgoing and outrageous. Karina was sweet and smart. He liked them both, a lot. If his luck held, he could keep going out with both of them. Delia sighed. I can't believe I was ever dumb enough to think you liked Karina. You're not angry about that, are you? Vincent ignored the queasy feeling that shot through his stomach. Leave it to Delia to mention Karina now. Delia didn't have a clue that he was seeing Karina. And Karina didn't know about Delia. If she did, she wouldn't be coming over. I'm not angry, Vincent tried to keep his voice steady. You and Karina fight over everything. It figures that you would both want the same guy. Yeah, it figures that Karina would want my boyfriend. Delia pulled away from Vincent and sat up. She's been jealous of me since we were kids. My clothes, my grades, my friends. Delia sighed. Karina pretends to be such a goody-goody, but as soon as she heard we were going out, she went after you. Vincent rolled his eyes. He never felt guilty about anything, and he wasn't about to start now. But listening to Delia talk about Karina made him nervous. He checked the clock on the mantel. 
8.30. Whoa, how could it still be 8.30? Vincent's breath caught in his throat. He jumped up from the couch. Vincent, what's wrong? Delia called. Uh, nothing. Trying his best to look casual, Vincent strolled over to the fireplace. He bent his head close to the clock. No ticking. The clock had stopped. And he had no idea how long ago. It could be nine o'clock right now. Vincent's heart banged against his ribs. He turned back to Delia. She started to apply a fresh coat of purple lipstick. Y you're right about my parents, Vincent stammered. He hurried across the room and grabbed Delia's arm. He hauled her off the couch. They will be home soon. You'd better leave. Excuse me? A minute ago, you said... I know, but I didn't realize how late it was. Vincent turned to the window. Still no sign of Karina, but she should be here any second. My mom thinks I'm studying for my calculus test, he told Delia. I promised I would. He handed Delia her green and purple parka and nudged her toward the door. She will kill me if she finds out you've been here. He flicked on the lamp near the door and peeked outside. No Karina. He yanked open the front door. I'll see you at school tomorrow, he told Delia. Right? Right, she answered. Delia checked her lipstick in the mirror that hung on the front hallway. Then she gave Vincent a quick kiss on the cheek. Tomorrow, she said, and made her way out the door. The second she left, Vincent raced into the family room. He fluffed the pillows on the couch. He grabbed the tissue Delia had used to blot her lipstick and shoved it into his pocket. When he heard Delia's car start, he rushed to the window and donned a wave goodbye. He watched the red taillights of her Jetta disappear around the corner, just as the headlights of another car came into view. Karina! Vincent's heart started pounding again, with excitement. He waited by the window, watching Karina park her silver eclipse and climb out. In the moonlight, Karina's long, blonde hair appeared as silver as her car. She had pulled it back into a sleek ponytail that brushed against her shoulders as she walked through the front door. Vincent grinned to himself as he watched her step into the light of the porch. Karina wore a short, black skirt and dark stockings that showed off her long legs. Even though it was February, she didn't wear a coat. Her sweater matched her blue eyes exactly. Vincent opened the door before Karina rang the bell. He stepped out onto the front porch and gazed down the empty street. That was a close call, he thought. Karina, he smiled. The Vincent Milano trademark smile. It's about time you got here. I've been bored out of my mind all night. Sorry I'm late, Karina answered. But guess what? As I drove over here, I thought of the perfect theme for your birthday party. Let's talk about it later. Vincent slipped his arms around Karina and pulled her close. He kissed her, a long, slow kiss. Come on in, he whispered, pulling Karina through the door. The second they stepped into the brightly lit hallway, all the color drained from Karina's face. Her mouth fell open. Oh no, Karina gasped. I don't believe it. Chapter 2 Huh? What is it? Vincent spun around to check the hallway behind him. Nothing there. He turned back to Karina. What's wrong? What's wrong? Color flooded back into Karina's beautiful face. Splotches of red appeared on her high cheekbones. What's wrong? she repeated angrily. She wrenched her arm out of Vincent's grasp and stalked into the family room. What is her problem? Vincent wondered. Karina came back carrying a clean tissue. She swiped it across his cheek, hard. That's what's wrong, she uttered through clenched teeth. She held up the tissue for him to see. Huh? Vincent stared at the smear of dark purple on the tissue. I'd know that color anywhere. Karina wadded the tissue into a ball and hurled it to the floor. Karina, whoa, Vincent started. I... Delia, she was here, wasn't she? She knows that you and I are seeing each other, and she came over to try to steal you away from me. And you, you kissed her. Vincent had never seen Karina so upset. She was actually trembling. It will be all right, he coached himself. Karina will calm down in a minute, as long as I make up a good story. Vincent kept his voice soft. He tried to sound calm, innocent. It's not what you think, he told Karina. Oh, really? She rolled her eyes. Delia just showed up at my door. She needed help with her American Civ homework. At least that's what she said. Karina stared at him, her blue eyes cold. That doesn't explain the kiss. You know how Delia is. Vincent stuck his hands into the pockets of his jeans. She does what she wants, no matter what. When she was leaving, she kissed me on the cheek. It was no big deal, really. Karina sighed and walked over to the window. She's caving, Vincent thought happily. Luckily, she could never stay angry at me for long. Vincent followed her. I didn't kiss her back or anything. It was a two-second peck on the cheek, really. Karina should be ready for a hug, he thought. Ready to forgive me. He wrapped his arms around her shoulders. With an angry groan, Karina yanked herself away from him. Delia only likes you because she knows you're mine. She wants everything I have. 
my grades, my clothes, my friends. She even wants you. Vincent watched in surprise as Karina's eyes grew bright with tears. He reached out for her again. Karina pushed him away. I'm sick of Delia, Karina cried. I hate her. I won't let her win this time. Karina pulled open the front door and raced outside. Vincent's mouth went dry. He stared at Karina's back as she ran out to her car. The car door slammed shut. The headlights flicked on. The engine roared to life. Hey, Karina, Vincent called finally. Wait! He started to run, waving wildly to her with both hands over his head. The car backed out of the driveway at top speed. The tires squealed against the pavement. Vincent sprinted across the front lawn. Karina, stop, he called. The car didn't slow. Vincent caught a glimpse of Karina's furious face as she pulled away. The tires squealed again as she sped around the corner. It couldn't stop thinking about Karina's face. So angry. So out of control. What was she planning to do? Chapter 3 It says here that the winner of the Conklin Award has to show X... X... Delia glanced over at her best friend, Brittany Myers. Brittany chewed on a strand of her long, honey-colored hair as she tried to figure out the word in the brochure. The winner has to show X. Exemplary school spirit, Gabe Denver read over her shoulder. It also says the winner has to be an outstanding all-around student, an accomplished performer, and a talented artist. He raised his eyes from the brochure and stared at Delia. His cheeks turned red. Sounds like you've got it made, Delia, he said. For sure, Delia murmured, rolling her eyes. She and her friends perched on one of the top rows of bleachers in the gym, watching an intramural basketball game. They had almost a whole section to themselves. Delia wasn't paying much attention to the game. She didn't want to think about anything but Vincent. She remembered the touch of his kiss. Just imagining Vincent's arms around her made her feel like she was about to go into nuclear meltdown. I wonder why he got rid of me so fast last night, she thought. One second he was begging me to stay. The next, he was shoving me out the door. Delia shook her head, tossing her long, dark curls over her shoulder. She smoothed the skirt of the dark orange shirt dress she'd found at the local thrift shop. It had big, bright yellow flowers embroidered all the way around the hem. She loved it. I'm probably the only girl at Shadeside High who would wear something like this, she thought. And that's why she bought it. She didn't like blending into the crowd. Delia noticed Gabe staring at her. He reminded her of a puppy waiting for a dog biscuit. She controlled the urge to pat him on the head. She knew Gabe had some sort of crush on her. She wished he would at least ask some other girls out. She bet there are a lot of girls at Shadeside High who would like to hang out with Gabe. Maybe even pretty? Delia gazed back and forth between her two friends. They would make a cute couple. I doubt Gabe would appreciate me trying to fix him up, Delia thought. But I have to do something nice for him. He's such a great guy. Who else would have enough patience to help Delia with her homework almost every night of the week? Who else would listen to her talk about Vincent for hours at a time? Delia thought it was sweet of Gabe, especially since she knew he didn't like Vincent. And it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why Gabe felt jealous. Hey, Earth to Delia. Brittany bounced up and down beside Delia. She waved her hands in front of Delia's face. Brittany was short and athletic, the best gymnast to shade side high. She couldn't sit still for more than a few minutes at a time. Sit down, will you? Delia asked. I want to fix my lipstick. She reached for her tube of midnight wine and touched up her lips. Then she tossed the tube back into her purse and glanced around, searching for a blotter. Brittany's notebook lay on the seat next to her. Delia ripped a page out of it and blotted her lips against the paper. Delia! Brittany yelped. She popped back on her feet again. I have to buy a new notebook practically every week because of you. Oops. I know it's a bad habit. Your next notebook is on me, Delia said. She stared down at the deep purple lip print she had left in the sheet of paper. A smiling lip print. Smiling because I was thinking about Vincent, she decided. Brittany dropped down on the seat. You've been out in the ozone somewhere since we got here. What's your problem, anyway? We were talking about the Conklin Award. I know you're interested in that. Thoughts of Vincent vanished. I'm sorry, Brittany. Even thinking about the Conklin Award makes me so nervous I can hardly stand it. Delia's parents had no money to send her to college. If Delia didn't win the Conklin Award, she would have to go to Waynesbridge Junior College in the fall, and it would even be hard to afford that. But if she did win the Conklin Award, she could go to the hottest and most expensive fashion college in New York City. When she was 12, she decided she wanted to go there, and she'd never changed her mind. Delia frowned. The Conklin wasn't just an award. It was a ticket to all her dreams, the most important thing in the entire universe. Well, except for Vincent. What do you think? 
Delia studied her two friends. She didn't want them to lie to her. Do I have a chance at the Conklin? Definitely, Gabe told her. The buzzer ending the game sounded, and he cheered for the senior team. Kids gathered up their books and backpacks and headed out of the gym. Piece of cake, Delia, Gabe continued. No one has a better shot at the Conklin Award than you. Delia couldn't help smiling. I'm glad you think so, she told Gabe. But I don't think the judges would just hand it to me. Seven kids applied for the award this year. She ran through the other candidates in her mind. Most of them weren't a threat, but there were a few who stood a chance. A good chance. Stuart Andrews is a major problem, she said. He's the best artist in the class. He told me he's doing a magic show for the talent part of the competition, Brittany put in. Remember when he made Mr. Marsden disappear? That was cool. Gabe shrugged. It was a cheap trick. Delia was still listening to candidates. And then there's Karina. She has a good chance, too. Delia tried to make her voice sound casual. She wanted to pretend that competing against Karina didn't bother her. She didn't think her friends bought it. Don't worry about Karina, Brittany told her. Easy for Brittany to say, Delia thought. She doesn't have to beat Little Miss Perfect. Karina has a great voice. But it takes more than talent to win the Conklin Award, Brittany went on. Grades are important, too. Yeah, Gabe added. And your grades are better than everyone else's. Thanks to your tutoring, Delia said softly. Brittany rolled her eyes. Yeah, her grades are better than yours, Gabe. Then her expression turned serious. Delia, don't get stressed about this, she said. Your grades are better than ever this year. And you've been manager of the girls' volleyball team for two years. Plus, you were in charge of the homecoming dance. And front page editor of the school paper, Gabe added, and chairman of the recycling committee, and... All right, all right, Delia cried, but it doesn't matter. None of that matters. She hated herself for sounding so whiny, but she couldn't help it. I'm front page editor, but Karina is editor of the whole paper, Delia reminded her friends. I manage the volleyball team. Karina is the star player. I was in charge of the dance, but Karina... Big deal, Gabe interrupted. So, Karina was the homecoming queen. So what? Sure, Karina is president of the senior class. And maybe Karina's voice will blow the judges away in a talent competition. So what? Gabe shrugged. Everyone thinks she's the most beautiful girl they've ever seen, he went on. The judges will fall in love with her. Nobody else should even bother trying to win. Gabe turned to Delia. Is that what you wanted to hear? Brittany giggled. Delia didn't. She knew Gabe was right. Get over it, Gabe scolded. When are you going to realize that you're so much cooler than Karina ever will be? So what if she's beautiful and sweet? Sweet is boring. Sweet is easy to forget. I hate sweet. This time, Delia had to laugh. Brittany shook her head. You know what? She asked. I'm tired of the whole thing. She hopped up from the bleachers. What's with you two anyway? You and Karina. Why do you hate each other so much? You used to be friends. Delia narrowed her eyes at her best friend. How could Brittany even ask that? She knew the way Delia felt about it. I've tried to be friends with Karina, Delia pointed out. You know that's true, Brittany. Yeah, and she tries to be nice to you. Brittany rested one hand on Delia's shoulder. You know, I do anything in the world for you. You're my best friend. But Karina is my friend, too. I don't think it's good for you guys to be fighting all the time. You get so freaked just thinking about her. And she's the same way about you. I can't believe you're defending her, Delia exploded. She turned to Gabe for support. He frowned. You and Karina did have a truce last year, he reminded her. You tolerated each other for almost the entire year. But before that, you actually had a friendly competition, right? Yeah, but this year, I caught her coming on to Vincent, Delia replied heatedly. I don't trust her. She acts sweet and innocent, but she tried to steal my boyfriend. And she only did it because she couldn't stand the fact that I had something she didn't. That's nasty. The gym door flew open and banged against the wall. A piercing shriek echoed through the gym. Delia's hands flew to her mouth. She felt too shocked to say anything. All she could do was stare. The way Gabe and Brittany were staring. Staring at Karina Fry. Chapter 4 What's wrong with Karina? Delia cried. Karina staggered into the gym. Her usually perfect hair was tangled and wild. Streaks of black mascara ran down her cheeks. And her eyes were red from crying? You! Karina's hoarse voice bounced off the walls of the gym. She pointed up at Delia with a trembling hand. Delia, you witch! I hate you! Delia gasped as Karina staggered across the gym toward her. Breathing hard, Karina pounded up the bleachers. Before Delia could move, 
Karina had her hands wrapped around Delia's throat. Hey! Delia heard Brady cry, but she sounded far away. You're not going to win this time, Delia! Karina shrieked. Her hot breath blasted Delia's face. Karina's nails dug into Delia's throat. Hey! Delia choked out. Red dots exploded in front of her eyes. She arched her back, struggling to break free. Karina let go. Delia toppled back. Her head slammed into the hard bleacher seat behind her. Karina crouched over her, panting like a wild animal. She grabbed Delia's throat again. Let her go. Karina, stop, Gabe yelled. Delia struggled to free herself. Karina's hands twisted tighter around her throat. You're not going to win. You're not going to take anything that belongs to me, Karina cried hoarsely. I can't breathe, Delia realized. I can't breathe. Blackness edged her vision. With her last bit of strength, Delia reached up and grabbed Karina's ponytail. She yanked as hard as she could. Karina shrieked in pain and surprise. Her hand slipped off Delia's throat. Delia scrambled into the aisle, gasping for air. Get her away from me, she gasped. Gabe reached for Karina, but she was too fast for him. She grabbed one of Delia's long, dangling earrings. She jerked it down. Delia screamed as pain shot through her ear. A trickle of hot blood oozed over her torn earlobe. Her lungs felt as if they were on fire. The gym blurred in front of her. The only thing she could see clearly was Karina's face. Karina's beautiful face, twisted with anger. Karina's lips were pulled back over her teeth in a snarl. She raised her hands and curled them into claws. Then she threw herself at Delia. I'm going to kill you, she screamed. Chapter 5 A sour taste filled Delia's mouth. She grabbed a handful of Karina's expensive sweater and pushed Karina away. Karina teetered on one of the bleacher steps. Then Gabe wrapped his arms around her. She went limp. Gabe led her down to the gym floor. Karina stared up at Delia. She began to shake. You won't win, Karina sobbed. Not this time, Delia. You won't. I swear it. Delia lowered herself onto the bleachers, trying to get her breath back. She barely noticed Bertie's arm around her shoulders. What is she talking about? What does she mean? Why is she acting so crazy? I didn't do anything to her, Delia murmured to herself. She kept her eyes on Karina. Karina dragged her arm over her cheek and smeared her makeup all over her sweater. You won't win the Conklin, Karina promised her. And you'll never, never, never get Vincent. He's mine, Delia, mine. Vincent, Delia sputtered. She felt dizzy. Her ear throbbed. Her head ached. Blood stained the sleeve of her orange dress. Delia slowly shook her head back and forth. She struggled to understand what had just happened. Nothing Karina said made any sense. Vincent? With Pretty's help, Delia hauled herself to her feet. What are you talking about, Karina? What do you mean? Delia stared down at Karina, trying to figure everything out. She's crazy, Delia realized. Karina is crazy. Crazy! You need help, Karina, Delia called shakily. You're sick. I'm not the sick one, Karina cried. You stay away from him. Girls? What is going on here? Ms. Bates, a gym teacher, ran up to them. Karina attacked Delia, Gabe told her. That's because she, Karina shrieked. Come with me and you can tell me all about it, Mrs. Bates said. Then she led her across the gym. Delia, go get the nurse to take care of that earlobe, the teacher called over her shoulder. I'll check on you in a little while. Delia slumped back against Pretty. Gabe climbed up the bleachers and took her hand. Are you all right, he asked. I, I guess so. Delia wondered if her voice sounded as shaky to her friends as it did to her. She didn't tear my earring out all the way, but why did she do that to me? Gabe glanced at the gym door. I think one of us should stay here with Karina. I'll go, he said in a rush. He turned and went running after Karina and Mrs. Bates. I think you should rest before we try heading to the nurse, Pretty said. I'm scared, Delia admitted. I'm worried about Karina. Did you see that frightening look on her face? Did you see all the hate? Pretty was pale, her eyes wide. She chewed tensely on a strain of her hair. I've never seen Karina like that, never. I've never seen anybody like that. Did you hear what she said about Vincent? She really believed it. She really believes he's her boyfriend. She's insane. She has totally lost it. That's the only explanation, Delia murmured. I'll talk to her later, Pretty promised. I'll try. I'll try to calm her down. I'll find out what happened. Something must have set her off. Delia nodded. I'm really frightened of her. I've never seen anybody so out of control. What if she does something horrible? Don't worry, Pretty soothed her. You're safe now. Miss Bates will talk to her parents, and Gabe is watching her. Let's just grab her things and go to the nurse. Then we can get out of here. Good idea, Delia said. But 
Give me a minute. I must look awful. Bertie laughed and shook her head. See? You're already starting to recover, she answered. Delia laughed too. Ow, that hurts, she complained. She ran her fingers through her tangled hair and straightened her dress. Even though her hands shook, she touched up her lipstick. She spotted a napkin on the bleachers, the flimsy kind they gave out with boxes of popcorn at the concession stand. Delia grabbed it and blotted her lips, then set it on the seat beside her. This time, the lip print wasn't smiling. My drawings are okay, I guess, Delia said to Vincent the next night. She tilted her head to one side and studied the picture set up against her living room wall. But they're nothing compared to Stewart's, she added, a tiny knot formed in her stomach. Vincent didn't answer. Stewart is really into detail, she went on. The knot grew a little bigger. His drawings are realistic. Perfect, down to the last detail. Mine are more, more imaginative, I think. She tipped her head the other way and smiled. Maybe they look better sideways. She did her big, bold drawings with markers in the brightest, loudest color she could find. Some of the drawings were of Delia's own fashion designs, wild styles, crazy colors. A few showed her friends. Pretty whirling across the gym during her floor exercise, a blur of bright color. Gabe, with his face stretched into an enormous smile, his fire engine red hair. She even did a self-portrait. In it, Delia wore her favorite black miniskirt and a purple shirt just a shade lighter than her midnight wine lipstick. Her hair hung loose around her shoulders, a wild, dark halo. There is no drawing of Vincent. Delia gazed at him, sitting next to her on a living room couch. She was a pretty good artist, good enough to get into the Conklin finals, but she would never be talented enough to do justice to Vincent. Nobody was that good. Vincent? Delia urged. Do you think my drawings are okay? Vincent kept staring at the basketball game on TV. He stretched and yawned. Of course, he mumbled. You wouldn't be in the finals if they sucked, would you? Delia watched Vincent as he spoke. He appeared bored. No, she decided, not bored. He's tired and worried. We're both still upset about Karina. Karina hadn't shown up for school that day. The whole school was buzzing about her. How strange Karina had looked when she attacked Delia. How hysterical she had acted. How unlike her usual sweet, responsible self. Of course Vincent is upset. Everyone at school is upset. They are her friends. I'm her friend too, Delia thought. Or at least I used to be. Delia didn't realize she said the words out loud until Vincent turned and stared at her. I was just thinking about Karina, she explained. Delia brushed one hand tenderly over her sore ear. We used to be such good friends, but it seems like a long time ago. Delia sighed. I'm worried, Vincent. Karina wasn't just angry yesterday. She was insane. I wish you could have seen it. She said all this crazy stuff about you being her boyfriend, about how she won't let me have you. It was so weird. Vincent didn't reply. Vincent? Delia prodded. Huh? Oh, yeah, weird. Vincent edged closer to Delia. He flicked off the lamp on the end table and slipped one arm around her shoulders. Any other time, Delia would have been eager to lose herself in the warmth of Vincent's arms, but that wasn't so easy right now. She felt too unsettled, too frightened. Delia stared into Vincent's dark brown eyes. I think Karina truly believes you are her boyfriend. She has convinced herself that I'm trying to take you away from her. Vincent shook his head. Don't worry about Karina. She's basically okay. Delia stiffened. He thought Karina was basically okay after what she did to Delia? Delia still had bruises around her throat and a bandage on her torn ear. How did he know so much about Karina anyway? Did he feel sorry for her? Don't be ridiculous, Delia told herself. Vincent doesn't care about Karina. He only cares about me. She wrapped her arms around Vincent's neck and rubbed her cheek against his. You won't let this thing with Karina come between us, will you? Forget about Karina, Vincent snapped. He turned and kissed her. His lips felt hard, tense. She ran her fingers through his hair. Delia felt her lipstick smearing, but she didn't care. She didn't care about anything, except Vincent, and the Conklin Award. Vincent, Delia pushed him away and studied his face. You'll come visit me if I go to college in New York, right? She asked. Delia's words stuck in her throat. She stared over Vincent's shoulder and gasped. Vincent, someone is watching us.